Well, the markets early on are liking or reacting positively, I should say, to the uh, jobs report that just came out here this morning. And that is um, 187,000 new jobs added in August. Uh, That is beating the expectations of 170,000. But unemployment uh, ticking up to 3.8%. Now, this could be a good thing as more people are getting back into the job market and looking for work. It could be a mixed bag of news. Let's get the reaction here from Mark Falter. You hear him on the Retirement Income Hour every Saturday and Sunday morning on KCMO Talk Radio, plus the Mid-American Wealth Advisory Group here in town. All right, Mark, what do you make of it? Well, yeah, it's uh, kind of working well for employment. Numbers are up. uh, Ironically, like I said, unemployment is actually going up, too. So we've added more jobs, yet unemployment is up at the same time. The market seems to like it. I don't think you'll see a huge reaction in the market, but the market seems to like it. And, uh, you know, things are kind of going well for the market right now. The Fed's going to meet here soon, and I don't think they're going to raise rates, if you want my honest opinion. You do not think they're going to raise rates. Why is that? No, I don't. Well, inflation is turning. I was actually doing some research on this last night, and inflation's down under 5 4% now. And uh, so... Believe it or not, he may just pull off a soft landing. <laughs> Nobody's more surprised than me. I did not think it was going to happen. I'll tell you what, it's uh, inflation seems to be turning the right direction. That's been this whole chaotic mess with uh, with the raising of the rates, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it has been. I mean, and, you know, they've been trying to figure out if they can pull off the soft landing for a period of time now. But now you're seeing people wonder if, like, the first half of 2024 – is going to be a very rocky one, and that could be when some kind of a recession kicks in here. What, what is your timeline on when you know whether that soft landing was achieved or not? Oh, I think we're going to be six to eight months before we really know that for sure. And I will just kind of say this, you know, and one thing I tell people on my show a lot, it depends on your age, you know. If you're 25 years old, just keep investing. Don't worry about it. But if you're getting close to retirement, let me just say it this, you know, the S&P is what it's like, almost at an all-time high. It's 1.5% from an all-time high. 200 points, and it'll be at its all-time high. So it's rebounded. People have made their money back, assuming they stayed invested. And uh, what's what's really, really unique about where we're at right now, fixed rates are at an all-time high. So it's almost like everything is telling you what to do. And unfortunately, what's really weird is retirees are still addicted to the stock market, but Warren Buffett's selling. He was uh, He's got really high cash amounts right now, as do we. Uh, because we're kind of planning on that uh, things going a little bit backwards at the first part of next year. Now, how did now now why would that be? What would trigger that? I guess because you're saying, hey, you know, all signs are pointing to a soft landing. And hey, listen, I would be happy with that, even though we know there were massive mistakes made by the administration when it comes to their monetary policy a couple of years ago. But if they pull it off, I, none of us want pain for the American people. So why do you see another correction coming? What would trigger that? I think, you know, just a lot of things going, we've got a, the inverted yield curve is hard to deny in the fact that it's been such a great predictor of recessions and it's massively inverted right now. Uh, If you buy a 10 year bond, you actually make less than if you buy a one year and it shouldn't be that way. And um, I don't think we're going to have a massive recession, but I think we're headed into a recession. So to about 70% of the economists, again, I don't think we're going to see a 2007, eight type scenario. What really has kind of got me a little bit concerned is uh, the massive, and it's not minor, it's a massive amount of credit card debt Americans have. They just did not quit spending. And even though the average credit card interest rate is at 20.8, almost 21%, they're still buying stuff. You know, it's, well, it's, it's $1 trillion. Well, $1 trillion. It, it, that, that is, yes, you're right. Um, we had some calls on that this morning mentioning that $1 trillion in credit card debt. I mean, it just feels like even if that soft landing is achieved and, uh, you know, we all hope that it is, boy, I mean, you are teetering on the edge here in this economy still because if things were to go south with a trillion dollars in credit card debt out there, I mean, you know, it it could get ugly, right? Yeah, I'll tell you what we need to not see happen, but, you know, we don't know. If the job market goes south, we're kind of hosed because, I mean, think about it, if you got bunch of credit you got forty thousand in credit card debt and you lose your job that's that's not going to end well it's going to cause a domino effect you know Mm -hmm. and dave ramsey talks about this uh emphatically uh he's gonna he's gonna have to roll up his sleeves over the next few years and do more work because um you know he's going to kind of motivate people to get out of credit card debt which he's doing a great job of but um i mean you gotta kind of stop and i think people are kind of like uh, optimistic right now 
And that's one of the things the Fed was trying to do is slow down optimism because, you know, optimistic people buy more stuff. And um, you know, what's, what's what just blows my mind? What blows my mind if you go to buy a new car right now, how much above MSRP they're selling cars for? It's like, guys, are you kidding me right now? It's the, one of the most depreciating items, and then you're going to pay more than it's worth. It's incredible. I guess, I guess they're getting away with it enough to justify it, though. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, a lot, some dealerships aren't. You yeah, know, so I think they were thinking the long game that hey, you know, people are going to remember this, but mm-hmm. some are, and it depends on the dealership. And I tell you what, if I find a dealership that is not, I really respect them uh, because you know they're. It's just people need to stop that stuff, you know, and yeah. uh, not pay more for. And that's what they were doing in 2007. If you think about it, they were paying more for real estate than what it was worth, and unfortunately, the banks were financing it. You know, yeah. Uh, Mark Falter, Retirement Income Hour, Saturday and Sundays at 9 on KCMO plus uh, Mid-America Wealth Advisory Group here in town. What do you think about this idea that, you know, you mentioned the trillion dollars in credit card debt. We're going into the fourth quarter. That's always a hot spending quarter with the holidays and whatnot. Could Powell, you don't think he's going to raise rates, but what about the idea that he doesn't want some blowout fourth quarter spending from the American people in this addicted consumer economy that we have? Can I talk you out well, of that? Is I there mean, a possibility? Um, there is definitely a possibility. If let's put it this way, if we have a uh, you know report come in that shows optimism and up is up and inflation starts turning and going back the other direction, he will raise rates. He's told us that, so he's he's definitely not saying. I mean, he could very readily raise rates. I just don't think he will this next go round. Uh, and if he raises them, it may only be like a quarter of a percent. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm hoping he kind of doesn't because to the point he doesn't, I think it will help. Help the market, but still, I still think people need to be cautious right now. Of course, you know what the thing is, is if you're close to retirement three to five years out, you need to be cautious no matter what the market's doing. And it's just kind of common sense. And it's that risk that kind of catches people, uh, you know, and makes them have to work a few more years. What do you make of the fact, Mark, you know, Jackson Hole, speaking to Jerome Powell, he had the big powwow uh, out there in Jackson Hole over the weekend and all the big bankers are there as well. I, this is more of a broad question, I suppose, than something micro. But from a macro perspective, is it healthy that it seems like we've got, you know, a small group of people really controlling whether or not this economy is going to succeed because legislators have been neutered and now we have this, you know, central banking uh, concept where a small group of people who are unelected are essentially controlling the system? No, it's not healthy, but it is what it is. It is the fact of life. It's uh, right now the market is being. That's why I tell people the market's being controlled by the government right now with the raising and lowering of rates. It almost doesn't matter what earnings reports come in at and all that stuff because you know if earnings reports come in great and the market goes up, then he raises rates and makes it go down. So it's kind of all moot point until the Fed gets out of it. So I don't think it's healthy. But you know, you go back to 2020 when we uh, had such a big dive. During COVID, we beat some records. You know, we actually dropped quicker than what the 1929 crash was. We didn't drop as far, thank gosh, but we dropped quicker. And um, he came in with a $1.95 trillion stimulus. I believe, I still will say, that had they not come through with the stimulus, we'd have been looking at another 1928-29, you know, type crash, or at least a 2007, because it was of a lot of emotion involved in it, and people were just scared, and we were in unknown territory with the with the virus. You know, it just, we didn't know what to expect. Mm-hmm. Well, Mark, there's a, a lot to watch here over the next few weeks. So when you look at the fourth quarter, uh, I know we still got a few weeks until the fourth quarter officially starts, but the back end of the year, how do you feel like the markets, do you think it's going to be kind of a roller coaster up and down, or do you see maybe a strong finish to the year, in a year that's already been very strong, and a lot of people didn't see this coming in 2023? I think it could be okay, but I tell you what, again, I say that a retiree right now, now that inflation has gotten down under 8 and 9%, you know, they can take some money off the table, go get 5 5 and a quarter percent, you know, returns, fixed interest, and um, we're finding money markets paying over 5% right now. So the point is, you can take money off the table, you can get more than a fi- uh, inflation rate on your money. I think it's a good time for them to take some cash in some chips. Heck, you're at an all-time high. And that's just a commonsensical thing that, that you should do and not try to risk it. And um, because it's when you risk it, you end up getting caught. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, as uh, we've talked about in the past and the Wall Street Journal has written about this, boomers are addicted to the stock market because of how good it's been the last 15 years. They can't help themselves. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what I see a lot, though, Pete? I see people call me off the radio and they've got enough. And uh, you always quote a saying that Warren, one of Warren Buffett's favorite saying is, why would you risk something you have? For something you don't need it's not a game to run up the score you've got enough 
stop, be good, be good with that, you know? And that's my theory, uh, and play it safe. It makes sense to me. Mark Falter, yeah. Mid-American Wealth. <laughs> You're the man, Mark. Have a great weekend. Tune into the show, uh, Retirement Income Hour, Saturday and Sundays at 9 at K- on KCMO. And we'll be talking to you soon, my friend. Be well. I appreciate it. Thanks. You as well. That is uh, Mark Falter on KCMO. Always doing great work.